Hey YouTube, it's your boy Rook here on the Rook Toy Hunting Journey. That's right, I'm finally going out to do a toy hunt with my viewers and subscribers, with all you, the audience. The last toy hunt I have shot on camera was back in February 2020 over at Tate's store at a park and swap. That's the last toy hunt I have put on camera back in 2020. That's right, over a year since recording of this video, since I've had a time to do a toy hunt. Mainly reasons why I haven't done a toy hunt, because think about it, it's the global bastard that we have, the pandemic. I haven't had a chance to really go out and shoot some good quality video mainly for my safety making because of masking restrictions which I'm still masked when I go out toy hunting I will be masked just for safety reasons and to keep the six foot uh, social distancing I'm still doing all that stuff but apologies because I haven't put out a toy hunt and that's a good chunk of my fan base they haven't seen a toy hunt and maybe that's the reason why the viewership and subscribers have been down they haven't seen any more toy hunts I'm going out today going on this particular toy hunt at some local retail stores looking for two specific items Items on this hunt. First item is the John Stewart new Green Lantern figure from the McFarlane Toys from the DC Multiverse line. I'm not really sold with this figure, just like I wasn't really sold with the last McFarlane uh, John Stewart figure from the Justice League one. This one's more comic book accurate, but the problem I have with this figure, specifically guys, to be real, to be true with you guys, is his costume. John Stewart doesn't wear body armor. He wears a skin tight spandex suit like a leotard. It's all one solid piece, the black and white and green outfit. I don't know why they went and gave him body armor. I'm assuming McFarlane decided to redo that buck and take it from another existing item, maybe another Batman figure, and just repurpose it, put the John Stewart head on it, and they give him some accessories that were Green Lantern-wise. I'm not liking that. That's not what Green Lantern's all about. He doesn't wear body armor. So, again, why are doing this? I'm not really sure. Maybe they took a direction because of the new 52 and made the suits look more body armor-esque. I'm not a fan of it. It's not sold with me, but I will be picking the item up just because because it is Green Lantern. The second item I'm picking up is a little bit more oddball, and I had to go oddball because we're going to pick up a Deadpool Funko Pop. Specifically, the 30th anniversary of Deadpool popping out of a birthday cake. Now, this is not the normal version of that pop, which I'll put up in picture for you right now. I don't want this one, which you can see on your screen. I want the 7-Eleven version of it, which is a metallic version of that Deadpool for celebrating his 30th anniversary popping out of that birthday cake. Looks a little bit different. Hopefully, I'll be able to catch some video of me coming either into a 7-Eleven or out of 7-Eleven with that particular pop. They may balk of it, me pulling out a camera, so there might be issues. I don't know. If I can't shoot video, I'll just showcase the item at the end of the video. If if, if or get anything on this hunt at all. The John Stewart stuff, I might not be able to pick that Green Lantern uh, figure up, mainly because it's so new. I'd probably be able to get it much easier at your Amazons or your Ebays. That is where I've heard people picking it up. I've seen some videos, seen some images of it. I don't know if it's out in the wild yet. I'm hoping to get my hands on one, but it may or may not happen. The Deadpool birthday cake, I've seen in called locations. They do have it in stock. I'm going to be definitely going out to pick that particular item up because it just looks wacky. It's a little bit corny. I like wacky and corny, and that's why I want to get my hands on. So I hope you do enjoy this particular toy hunt. I do apologize again for not going out and doing hunting, but that's changing, so I'm going out hunting now. Stay tuned, guys. Awesome, awesome toy hunts on the way. Alright guys, we're in a Target, which is a little bit further than my normal Target I normally go to. Let's head over to the McFarlane Toy section and see what they have in some Transformers. So we swing the camera around, so you can see what it looks like. I'm at the toy section now for, of course, Transformers and McFarlane Toys. Uh, they do have some of the newer stuff here. This is, of course, the Infected Superman. This is part of a Build-A-Figure wave. If you've never seen it before, you make Ares, which is right here. Uh, these were, I believe, the characters that were part of that wave, which are right here. But here's the Infected Superman. Again, this is the McFarlane Toys. They got the Multiverse license that I believe uh, Mattel had. Correct, yeah, it was Mattel. I had to think who had it originally. Mattel had it, then lost it to McFarlane Toys in 2020. So, uh, we even have a crumb up right there. But, yeah, newer Batman figure. We have, of course, the, uh, from the Dark Knight Metals, which was their version of Aquaman, which is a Batman, or a, bat a female version of Batman right there. But uh, pretty cool all together. I've never seen a Starscream here for the Studio Series, which it looks really, really good. It's a different build. I think it's based on the Blitzwing design. 
I believe, for the Bumblebee movie. But this is a Starscream paint variant. I believe what that is right there. So, pretty cool. They have the blur for your fan of Transformers. They have the blur from the Transformers movie. I have seen the Hot Rod figure, but that is a bit pricey. It goes for about close to, I think, 25 bucks. It's They call it a Voyager, but it's not really a Voyager. It's basically a deluxe with a bunch of extra accessories, and it sells for pretty high penny. This is kind of surprising that they have the Roadblock. I did see this earlier when I was walking through the aisles from the G.I. Joe Classified series. Uh, this, I believe, is a different road. It might not have a different roadblock or not. It might have been from the original wave of roadblocks. I just haven't seen it in stores. Very surprised. Uh, again, not a big fan of, let's say, roadblock. If it was, let's say, Snake Eyes, 100% a buy in my personal opinion. I already have the, the Snake Eyes figure, but not interested in roadblock. Of course, we have Power Rangers right here. Uh, the Ecto-1, I walked right by it. Ecto-1 for Ghostbusters. Uh, price point, I think, for this guy is 50 bucks, but I could be incorrect. Um, let's swing back up to Transformers. I didn't get the whole section so you can see what it looks like right here. So we got a lot of Transformers stuff right here. And, of course, they have that Grimlock Voyager class right there as well. All right, we're taking a look at the, of course, the Mattel WWE Elite figures here. Um, I haven't collected Elite in a long time, but even getting Keith Lee finally coming in, what's very surprising is right here. I am super surprised they even have this. This is the, I think, Wave 3. Yeah, it's Wave 3, you can see it right there, of AEW figures. These are super hard to find. I'm surprised this is even here. Uh, here was the Wave, if you want to see who came in it. You had Pac, you had Sheeta. Excuse me, uh, Riho, uh, Orange Cassidy, Darby, Matt, and Nick Jackson. This, of course, is Nick Jackson. Surprised they had this one. Of course, this was, they did a figure, I believe it's a paint variant compared to the first wave that came out, which you can't find that figure anymore. But they have this one. I'm not super interested in getting Nick Jackson. I'd love to get a Pac, just because he's just such a badass, because he's a bastard, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, <laughs> um, surprised they have this. I'm going to leave it on the peg. I'm not super interested in that. They have some black series, not a whole lot. You can see the pegs are pretty empty. We have, of course, uh, Jar Jar right here. This is kind of surprising that they have a stunning Steve Austin. That's right, stunning Steve Austin, not, of course, Stone Cold. This is before he was Stone Cold. Uh, that was part of this wave, number 81, right here. And here's the full wave, if you're interested in who was available in that wave. So, uh, they, of course, have the He-Mans. We've seen these before. Uh, many many times this is the kind of the they took the retro look for he-man and kind of revamped it a little bit so uh it's very cool that they brought back he-man it says new for 20 uh which is i guess 2020 and of course it's new for 2021 to tell you right there to new so you could tell you could tell what year this was released this is 2020 that's right there's 2021 for zodak guys we're gonna head over to the funko section of this particular target and see what they have the section looks very very empty and very spaced out let's take a look i'll swing the camera around so you can take a look at what we have to deal with here so Looking at the Funko section over here, uh, it, they have this new collectible we uh, we love. A lot of Targets have this now, but this section, when we get close so you can see it, is very, very sparse as far as their product. Uh, they have the Colonel Mustard from the uh, Target Con here, some of the Office Pops, not a whole lot. Macron Toys, again, in this section like we saw before in the other section. Um, some Son Goku stuff from SH Figure Arts. Uh, but not a whole lot of product here. Very surprising that this location doesn't have a whole lot of Funko product. I'll go back a little further so you can see it as a whole. Again, not much in this section. Very, very pick clean. Uh, not a lot of good product from what I'm seeing. Nothing I'm really looking for. Uh, so, yeah, uh, not that great up here. They have some 10 insurers up here at the top. But, yeah, not that great of uh, product. Let me swing over a little bit to the far side here because this is where their collectible section is if you're into magic and things like that and collectibles you have uh, Pokemon stuff again magic they have a whole section of magic here this is a bit surprising that they're doing this now especially some of the more high-end products like of course Zendikar Rising packs right there Commander Legends even the Commander Legends uh, Commander decks here I'm surprised they have some of this product out they have of course the uh, bundles right here for Kaldheim and Zendikar Rising, but kind of surprising, even the gift edition right here. So uh, we'll head over to the next location, see if we find anything else. All right, guys, in my electronic section of my local Walmart, if you're not familiar, you're looking for pops, always head to the electronic section for both Walmart and Target. You'll be able to find them there. So let me swing the camera around and take a look at what we have to show you guys. Um, this particular Walmart has several different 10 inches here. These are the LeBron James one. If you're a fan of sports, LeBron James might be up your alley, not mine. They have a Sorcerer Mickey here, which is a sort of a newer pop. 
Uh, last week I did see the Optimus Prime's 10 inch. It wasn't sold if I wanted to get it or not, but they have it here. Uh, if you take a look back here, they're starting to get the Lucha Libre, the El Ganasso ones here. I'm not sure who he's supposed to technically be, but um, here's the back of that one so you can see what's available. But this is a Walmart exclusive. They have those now coming out, so keep your eye on that. Uh, we have Edge right here. Not a huge section, but they have a few things. They also have a lot of action figure stuff in this section. Uh, they have some DC Multiverse. <coughs> they have this Gandalf and Lord of the Rings here. Again, not a big fan of it. The Deadpool body not included. Does a massive amount of saying. He's 18 years or older. 600 lines of dialogue. Uh, if you're a fan of Deadpool, this may be something you'd be interested in. So, yeah, um, a few different things. They even have some mystery boxes down here, which are not really quote-unquote mystery boxes. They have some as well at your local Walmart. Take a look if you're looking to get some of that. You might be able to find it. And, of course, some of the figure uh, XL, fig pin XL. These are very, very well known for multiple uh, IPs. They do a lot of these uh, comic books. They do it for Star Trek, Star Wars, I believe, make these as well. So, yeah, not a whole lot of stuff in their section here. Let's head over to action figures and see what else we have. All right, guys, we're in the action figure section now, and it's been picked pretty clean. I mean, you can see the pegs. Not a lot going on here. The DC Multiverse and McFarlane toy stuff's right here. Not a lot to really speak of. All you have is a couple of Wonder Womans. That's about it. Their Black Series stuff, again, picked heavily clean. Not much to talk about. The Vintage line, very little. Even their Transformer section is, is just nothing here. You got some of the new Headmaster stuff and some of the Netflix stuff on this side. I'm gonna spin around to the other end of the aisle over here, their WWE stuff. Again, pick heavily clean. They got the ring, they always have the rings. And we talked about it at Target, the He-Man stuff here. So unfortunately, this is the strikeout. Nothing for the multiverse section. Again, we'll come back to it real quick, guys. I do apologize, nothing here. So let's conclude this video and see what we picked up for today. All right, guys, the toy hunt for today is complete. Again, the very first toy hunt of 2021. I'm happy again to get out there and do more toy hunts with my viewers and subscribers and my audience because I know you guys like the toy hunts and I'm going to be doing them again very, very soon. I did pick up one item, which I picked up off camera mainly because the footage I captured, it just went bad. I, I couldn't capture it right. It got all goofed up. So I'm going to showcase to you the item here in a second. Again, we hit Target and a Walmart and a couple 7-Elevens. Target was pretty much a bust. Again, we're looking for that uh, John Stewart, the McFarlane Toys Green Lantern, the newer version of him, kind of in that body armor, which I talked about. Again, I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like. I still want that figure, even though it looks a little bit weird with that body armor, but that's how I think the 52 did it when it did the DC version of the 52. Everybody was decked out and they had that sort of body armor representation, even though, though that Green Lanterns don't need body armor, like let's say Batman, who would need body armor to protect himself because he's not a superpower person, like a Superman or a Wonder Woman or in this case, a Green Lantern, who has the rings to protect him. Uh, not the same sort of character. So again, Target was a bust. We went again to Walmart, as you saw at the end of this video, and the pegs were pretty much clean. There was nothing really there. I don't know if they ran out of stock or they're just not stocking the shelves. I don't know what's going on there. The Again, go electronics if you're looking for pop stuff. Uh, they had the big 10-inchers there. And again, not a big fan of a lot of 10-inch pops. Usually they take a lot of space. So if you have a lot of space available to you, you may want to collect a couple 10-inch pops. I'm still on the fence about that Optimus Prime, which I talked about in that Walmart portion of the video. I would only get Optimus if I can get Megatron. My personal opinion is if you wanted to have two characters for, let's say, a franchise, in this case, you wanted Prime and, and Megatron, same things like if you wanted, let's say, Superman and Luther, or you wanted Green Lantern and Sinestro. Same sort of idea. You want to have the, the, the protagonist and the antagonist. There's a really cool 10-inch, I'll put a picture up so you can see what it looks like now, a really cool 10-inch Godzilla. I believe it's glow-in-the-dark, sort of this blue glow that Godzilla has. I don't know if I want to get the Kong version as well to sit that two-piece set against, you know, protagonist, antagonist. I don't know if I want to go down that, that particular road. The, the Godzilla in that scale looks awesome. I'm really tempted to pick that one up. That being said, now let's talk about what I did pick up. And again, I went to 7-Eleven. Now, if you're looking for anything that's exclusive pops at 7-Eleven, you want to try one of two different spots. You want to look on the floor. They might have a, a stand, a display stand, has pops listed all over it. It's a, it's a legit pop display stand. 
They have some exclusive stuff there. I was looking for, again, that 30th anniversary Deadpool coming out of a cake. Again, this was a paint variant, different than the normal uh, Deadpool coming out of a cake. I didn't know going on this hunt originally that there was really two variants until I mentioned the beginning of the video. Before I even started doing the hunt, I thought there was only one version of him, and that was that exclusive version. I didn't know there was a normal version. I saw it at a couple FYEs, uh, which is not part of this video, but I was like, oh, you could just get the normal one. It's a paint variant, a metallic version of Deadpool. I would say nine times out of 10, if you have the choice of picking up a paint variant versus a normal version of that same identical pop, nine times out of 10, the paint variant, the change of the figure, because maybe it's exclusive, it's again, a paint variant, it's flocked, it glows in the dark. If it's the same identical mold, same identical uh, buck they're using, it's usually more expensive on the secondary market. It's more expensive when it, that pop it gets vaulted. I would try to get the exclusive if you can if you can't you know stick for the normal version so we're looking at the guy i picked up again this is the metallic version of deadpool 7-eleven version you can see the big 7-eleven sticker right there it does say pop i'll showcase the packaging right real quick like we normally do a breakdown pop right there deadpool 776 we have the deadpool coming out of the cake right there it says in i think it even says yeah in in cake that's what i thought i said in cake shot right here which is the same identical packaging as the normal deadpool again deadpool in a cake and the back of the packaging and showcase everything that was available in that particular wave looks really good so let's get into this pop here now this guy to me personally speaking feels like a pop deluxe and you're going to say rook why is it pop deluxe most of the time a pop deluxe would be a character's head and their arms but no body the body is hidden because they're in a spaceship or they're in a truck or a car and usually commands a much higher price point i believe this guy was 20 dollars to us I've seen uh, Pop Deluxe is going from $25 up to $40 out the gate. Usually $40 Pop Deluxe's are usually tacked on to, let's say, a Sino Comic Con, New York Comic Con, some type of convention exclusive, usually. But this one looks really, really good. I see why it's a, a paint variant now. The normal one doesn't look like this. You can see the metallic paint at the bottom of the cake right here. You can see it shine. It does have 30th anniversary right there of Deadpool. He has two different swords, and he's like, he's literally jumping out of the cake. That's the gimmick. But it looks good. He is, again, a bobblehead. I've mentioned it before. Not a fan of bobblehead. The Deadpool itself, to me, isn't metallic. If you're going to say, is the top, is the head metallic? Doesn't look metallic to me. It's the cake itself of where it's metallic, and I think the swords are metallic as well. He doesn't look metallic as far as the character. It looks like a normal Deadpool to me. I could be mistaken, but looking at the character looks like a normal Deadpool. The cake, and he's exploding out of the cake. You see the top ruffles right here, as well as the swords are metallic. They have a, a metallic sheen to it. That's why this is considered the metallic, quote unquote, metallic version of Deadpool. But I do like it. It looks cool. Neat gimmick. The normal version wouldn't look like this as far as the paint goes identical sculpt different paint so personally speaking i think it's a good pop um i wanted it because i thought it was a cool gimmick i thought it was very very different feels different again it feels like a pop deluxe to me but doesn't command the pop deluxe price point of being that 25 to 40 dollars and i don't mention pop deluxe on the packaging here at all and my packaging was a little beat up on this one i found him sitting on a shelf i should look more closely at the packaging because it is dinged up uh, specifically right here in the corner i'll show you case it so you can see it that corner is a little bit beaten up right there you can see it i should look a little closer at the packaging but these are all the guys again that were available in that wave there's a lot of deadpools available in this deadpool wave so again very cool pop if you're looking for a neat pop for deadpool this may be up your alley so again i hope you guys do enjoy this toy hunt we are doing toy hunts again i'm very happy to shoot more video for toy hunts i think you guys do like it and i hope you do enjoy this again coming around to toy hunts one again once again rather in 2021 remember to click the like button by my page click that subscribe button to picture my face when you subscribe Channel, click the bell icon be notified of my latest videos and of course last but not least you click windows over here to watch more of my content take care guys see you next video and bye bye